everybody yes we are live which is pretty weird Hello everyone. Hello Right, let's get started on this painting today. I am going to be doing a abstract landscape on this, which is um, a surface I've created. So it's a blocking for watercolor paper with um, the Dalaroli texture paste just kind of stippled on. And it's created this kind of almost grainy texture, which is great fun. That's actually going to uh, give us a really nice surface to work on. I do have a, a colour study which we did recently, um, if you've seen my shorts you'll have seen it on there and that colour study is what's going to make the basis of this piece today which I'm just going to go get because as usual I have forgotten something and as this is my first time live streaming, woohoo, yay go me! Um, well, I've promptly forgotten something, so of course I will be back in one second while I go get that. Now I have my colour study, which is here. I'm just going to stick it up so you can all see. Uh, where should we put it? I don't really know where the best place is to put it, where you guys can actually see it. There maybe. Yeah, I think I can put it there, right on the edge, and that should give you guys some view. Let's take the bottom of it down as well. There we go, right. So, what we're going to do first is probably mark out where I want to actually, I want a few things to go. And I've got this, which is just a nice, one of the dowly, dowly really ones. I don't want a harder one than that, actually. Yeah, actually, we'll use this, which is one of our um, harder contis, just so that we've got what we want. Now, about half of this is almost a third of it is sky. So we're going to keep this as sky, we're going to take it to here. So we're going to just go straight across and mark out, that's our horizon line. And then I want our landmass to stop about two inches from there. But also it is a bit further down and it's also above the horizon line. So First thing I want to do, map this out. And then it comes down. As it comes down, it kind of sticks out a wee bit. And then comes back on itself. 
Now for those that may have seen this before, this is uh, the colour Sophia did and this is a beach on Isla Harris I think called Boster Beach. So uh, it's a famous Scottish beach, beautiful white sand. So it's always lovely to paint these sorts of things. Now the beach head is here and it kind of curves around and then sticks out a bit. And it continues to do this coming this way across our surface. And then we've got quite a curve in before it comes, comes back out. Just love the different shapes that you get when it comes to kind of beach headlands. Of course, I never do anything on a straight anyway, so everything tends to slope that way because I'm wearing a slate, but yeah. So that's the main section of the beach headland. Then what we've got is, we've got this section down the bottom, which is our grassland here. And this is going to come up and up, going this way and continue this. And then as it comes down, it comes back down, but it also kind of sticks. I want this to stick out a bit more than what I've got in this, in the colour study. The good thing with the Conte, it's, it's a hard pastel, so it quite likes the tooth of this paper that I've put down. So we're going to stick out this way. Now, we've also got some darker sections here, which are rocks. I want to try and make sure that we get we get that the tide wasn't all the way in at the time. Now, for those of you wondering, um, I just I'd love to spend more time in the Isles. Just they're such an amazing place. So we've got a rock formation here, which I want to get in. I really want it to contrast with the vibrancy of the colours. So. And this kind of curves around because the sea kind of comes in and then back out that way, leaving us with a beautiful expanse of this, this white sandy beach coming around here in this way. So this kind of comes that way. And that curves in. We're going to curve this in and out here so it kind of follows this line. And then we've got that. A line of rocks going out here as well. And the sky, I want the sky to be as neutral as possible. So in the colour study, I've just kept it to slightly darker line along the high horizon because it was kind of dark clouds coming in. But the sky was so hazy, it all kind of melded together. So um, I want to kind of keep this as melded as possible. So that's kind of mapped out what we're going to do. What I don't want to do is I don't want this to take away from this. Although the foreground, which is obviously this section here, because we're looking out to sea, this section here is obviously going to be your darkest. This is where it gets lighter. But as this is going to be an abstract piece anyway, I'm going to slightly tweak that so that our land masses are dark enough to actually make a difference and help stop that, this section here, becoming too much of a focal point. Because actually, this section, as you can see from colour, I want to keep this quite plain. So I want to head that way. We are going to start on our sky.
Sorry for that interruption. Doorbell went. Lost looking tourist, unfortunately. Now, ignoring the fact that it says barley breeze so this is actually um, isopropanol, which I sometimes use for uh, washing out pastel if I want to do uh, underpainting, but usually I use water. This time I'm going to use isopropanol. The reason for that is I do want it to dry pretty fast. Because this is Blockingford watercolour paper and not sand, standard sanded paper for pastel, um, it has a habit of, even though I've coated it with this gesso and paste mix, it still will try to soak this up really fast and I don't really want it to do that. Also lost my paintbrush again for the third time. See, every time I put it down it just disappears. So there's like magical pixies somewhere stealing my paintbrushes. Right, so we're gonna do sky, then our kind of lights, mediums, darks, wash it out, and then put our next layer on top. Now the sky, because we've got this slight dark band going to light, we're gonna start with our darker colour first. Which actually is gonna be more of a neutral. So this is one of my unisons. And we're just going to add this on. If there's anyone here that's never really used pastel as a medium before, this is nothing to worry about. This is just the texture of the paper that I've created. The mixture of Dalaroni paste, texture paste and Liquitex white gesso um, applied to some blocking food watercolour paper. Um, it is actually a much more cost effective way to get a really nice textured surface for doing pastel work on. Sanded paper is great and I do that for a lot of my um, more detailed projects where you need it but with this I can have a lot more fun. I don't have to worry about um, Kind of the details in this i like the texture and i want that texture to show through so this is slightly harder this is i think this is a rembrandt this is a rembrandt um and it's a much much lighter blue now it doesn't look like there's a lot going on but trust me the texture in this paper is just eating into this pastel so once I've applied the isopropanol, you'll see what I mean. Right, so I'll show you what I mean. I'm just going to spray this on and then use my paintbrush um, to paint it out. Wish I might be the paintbrush, but I really don't know where it's gone. So um, the other reason I keep it in a spray bottle like this, and I do have a lid for this, is obviously being 99%, I think, alcohol. Um, it evaporates really quickly and also the fumes will make you really sick so if keeping it in a sealed bottle like this that I can spray it just saves me all sorts what I don't want to do is don't want to get it on this so we'll hopefully try not to do that to get high while we're at it as well. So you can see straight away as soon as I apply the brush. You can see that the alcohol is just mixing with the pastel. Pastel is really just a very very dry kind of watercolour at the end of the day. I believe watercolour has a little bit more um, binder in it so often not if I'm making my own 
pastels from pigment from the ground then I generally we use agar 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 which is quite good um, I've even used xanthan at one point it's also quite good Brush out a wee bit. And yes, this will look messy for the time being. I mean, look, it's drying so fast. not keeping up with it. Just switch to my fatter brush. Just why is it with my paintbrushes at the moment? I suspect the cat's been eating them.
these little bits of green running across the bottom, we just kind of melded in and it's just because of these kind of bits of algae that were hanging out, but they weren't on top of the water, they were underneath. They're giving me a slight green glow for certain areas of the water, which I think we'll just get in there. I'm just going to water that down. And you'll see all the different colours and tones coming out as we do this. Here's some of the green. It kind of gets lighter as we go down. And again, this is just water. This is nothing complicated. And all it's doing is it's just lifting the pigment from the pastels and allowing me to move it around. It'll also free up space in the grain. the colours are in that. I really like the kind of jewel tones that you get from water. It is just an amazing, you get such amazing colours. Now I want to get in a darker, darker tone for the green before I overlay it. So my darker green. So this is the furthest away landmass, which will also have quite a bit of the our darkest colour. I don't want to want to bring this this up a wee bit, make it a bit more pronounced. Um, for those of us that just joined us, this is uh, an abstract landscape painting in soft pastel. Um, and the subject, which is from my colour study up here, is the beautiful beach at Foster Beach, which is on the Isle of Harris. Um, I love Scotland, I've been up here for well on 20 years, so quite a long time, and I absolutely love it. Although today is pretty dreek, um, in the Scots language it is miserable and grey, just kind of classic in Perthshire. So Perthshire is the start of the Highlands, gateway to the Highlands, um, and I live just at the top. So I'm surrounded by the start of the mountains and also some of the valleys as well. So I get a really good mixture of uh, all the different things. Um, that's kind of the classic Scottish landscape. So we know that the grass kind of swings back round and in, just like I do here. I know that this cliff, cliff, not really sure what to call it really, because they weren't really high for cliffs. They were, you know, a couple of feet at best, but where the stone outcropping comes back up and cuts into the land, kind of stops there, kind of starts a little bit and then comes back round into this section here, which is where we're going to go. And then we've got our grassland section at the front here, which because it's in the foreground, it is darker than everything else, but like I said earlier, I'm going to keep all of the kind of um, land head as dark as possible to contrast with the sky and the sea. And the sky, we've washed it out, but we will be going over it with more colour later, as you'll see. And I just want to get this dark down and grounded. You'll see as soon as I add water to this, it's going to be a lot, lot darker, which is kind of what we want. I want to make sure I'm reinforcing where my line is there. And same here. I don't really intend it to come out that far, but you know, it's fine. Uh, 
then this is another bit of that. And this is kind of just almost like a, it's kind of like a grassy hummock that just kind of stuck out. And if you walked that way and then that way, you were kind of up and then you come down onto the sand and then kind of naturally walk that way onto the beach, um, which is really difficult to get in, get in a picture just because the land looks flat um, until you stood on it and then you realise that actually you're a couple of feet above the, the beach level, but you don't really notice um, unless you step off and then you think you're stepping onto sand and then you fall face first into the sand, which isn't always great. I always like to get as much dark at the bottom and in the corners because it helps actually focus. It gives you focus going in and that way, which is what we want. Right. Now what we're going to do is we'll add our water and this is where it gets significantly darker. See, we come up and kind of see what I mean. This is just a scraggy, pretty scraggy paintbrush. I don't tend to use anything fancy when I'm working like this because I don't actually need anything fancy. In actual fact, I tend to like it less fancy because it gives you it's a bit more natural. And also, the the rough edges is giving me this beautiful texture, so. I'm kind of bring, bring the land out to the sea. Which always sounds really weird, because most people are like, oh, you bring the sea to the, no. No, you bring the land to the sea, not the sea to the land, I'm afraid. So you can start to see this is coming together. I'm just gonna add in our little hummock here. at the bottom. about to change and rain on us as well outside. So you can watch all that going on outside. Right, so if I want, do you want it a bluey grey? Which is this. And this is our this is our darker grey colour. rub that line in. I want to try and keep the line, this line, as smooth and as neat as possible, which 
a really textured surface is quite difficult but um, the reason for that is we want this these hills to be neat so they stick out a lot more from our background Bring our blue back in. I kind of feel like it needs a little bit lighter. This might be too warm, I think. Too warm. This is our really light one. But I don't really want to go too close into light first. So we'll go with this one first. And then a lighter one, yeah, up here. Wipe this down in a minute so you can see. I do want to wet that down, I actually might just rub it in. Might be a better option. What I might do is just rub some of this in 
kind of like I like the colours and I kind of like the texture so Okay, now I can kind of go over that with a bit more colour. Where does this come from? But no matter where I put my pastels, I always seem to pick up colour from somewhere else. Just slightly. There we go. Lightened. Right, so that is our classic Scottish sky. Um, I ha hate to say it, but they're always this colour. Occasionally you see blue sky, but not very, I'm afraid. Not very at all. So, I want to get some of this beach colour down. Um, don't want to go for too light yet, so I don't want to get... Kind of almost neutral skin tone colour almost to the sand because the sand on um, most of the beaches actually um, on the islands in Scotland and tend to be very very white um, but underneath that they do actually have this kind of beautiful almost peachy colour to them which if you catch at the right time of the day especially um, actually kind of towards the evening and dusk as the sun's going down, it really does actually reflect a lot of the sky colour. So the beaches can go really golden coloured um, because of how white and because of this colour underneath. So you get a you do get a beautiful colour to the sand. Oh. Just gonna wash this out. Don't want too much water on the brush. So you'll see how dark this will go. It will try lighter. Um, as soon as it's dry, it'll, it'll dry significantly lighter. And the good thing with pastel is when you add water or even alcohol to it, um, it will lift. So light water, light watercolor, which is also just really pigment like this. Uh, once you add water, you can reactivate it, which does mean you can spread it further than you mean to, and you can muddy it. So you've got to be really careful sometimes that you don't do too much with the water. I try to keep the amount of water to my brush minimal, unless I really want it to drip. And I love all this. It's just beautiful, all the texture you get. I'm just going to... Take this off here. You can see it's kind of picking up some of the greens. 
and then running down, which is fine. All right. So there is our base color for the beach. While that dries, yeah, this is this is almost dry right now. Um, we're gonna add some more color now. We've got the darker line, which is the horizon line, which normally is lighter, but in this, it needs to be darker to bring this forward. So that's slightly darker. And we're going to have, where the sunlight effectively catches, you'll always find there's a, a reflective section of C further away in the distance, and then you get your normal grey colour where it's less reflective closer to you, which sounds really weird, but actually it... It does make sense. The sea that's closest to you is the least reflective in this line of sight versus that further away. So we are going to add some of the grey, which is a similar colour to what we had in the sky. Remember, the water is reflecting the colours of the sky and vice versa. So you want to be able to mirror some of this colour in this somewhere. Yes, you can see pastel dust everywhere. This is just one of my unisons, so it's pretty soft. And because this is textured, it's just going straight on. So where do we want to keep the grey? So we want to keep the grey around this part of my colour study. And also section down here where we kind of get closer to the rocks. So I've kind of lost the rock line, which kind of does come along here, but we, we'll gain that back anyway. So we're going to add some of this here. We are just going to use fingertip just to kind of rub it in slightly. Same with here. Should be if you're using your pastel, you should be dragging it in the direction you want the C. Now, with this C, it's coming in this way, but also this way. So I'm being very careful that I'm kind of dragging it along and up slightly. It just gives that slight curve because as the further around I go, I'm going to be going more that direction as we keep going that way. be bringing some of our blues and greens back in now. What should we start with? Should we start with our really deep turquoise? This is a Conti. Um, it's the last bit of my one of my Contis. It's absolutely tiny and um, there isn't much of this one left. But as you'll see, it is such a beautiful deep colour. Now, I want the pastel to overlay on each other. So I do want, I do want it to, I do want the lighter grey to kind of show through. This is our kind of darkest blue that's going on here. It's also, I want a line here. we can kind of follow along. Always try, if you're using pastel, especially if you've done what I've done, which is masking, take the sides of the painting where I'm working. Um, always make sure you push your pastel right up into this edge, and otherwise make sure you get your finger in and just make sure that you're covering. Otherwise you do end up with a white line down the edge, or um, if you've used an underpainting, you get that down there as well. And it's not particularly helpful, and it doesn't look particularly pretty either. So. You don't want to be doing that. Now, how far down do I want to bring this? Probably to about 
here. This has come out too far, so I can, I'm going to be painting over that anyway. That's not going to make much difference. going over it with the bits and pieces for the detail for the land as it comes around so it won't make any difference for the time being. Now our next colour we've got this little I want to add in little bands of, of proper blue uh, which is a, a red blue and it's because the water isn't always blue green as you see it the water is actually a lot of different colors depending on what it's reflecting at the time what it picks up so in, if you're doing C you never want it to be just one color it needs to be lots of different colors together right we're heading down Kind of our lightest colour here, which is kind of coming up. It's probably because we've got rocks there that we haven't put in yet, but they'll be there. So this comes right into, I want this to come in in a bit more than what I've done there. probably down a wee bit more because we're going to be adding the green back in anyway so a nice it's because of seaweed underneath here you know though you can't really see it it is there and it just gives this little it gave it gave this green cast to the water even though you can see the seaweed you could still see this green cast to the water from where it was so I'm just adding little bits of it here and there to add interest as well and it's kind of overspills onto the beach like that. I'm just going to add a little bit up here as well. Just a little bit. See, you can see. Look how beautiful that is. Look at all these colours. So many colours. So many, many colours. Now, speaking of colours, do you want to tie in to these hills and start bringing out those colours um, the kind of darker is that darker than what I'm working with? yes, right I'm going to use this um, dark gold green just to give us a little bit of difference this to come down along there and I do want it to kind of come along here a wee bit as well And then yeah, we want to bring this in as we start the headland. I want a definition between this front bit and this bit, which is a bit further away. So I'm going to bring that up a wee bit. 
It's a little bit uneven. it's got so normally I would do darker sections along the line and lighter towards the light source but actually because of the, the stone um, it's not actually the case it's darker darker where the rocks are and then lighter further away This, yeah, this cuts right into there, and then it comes back again, and it comes around to here. We get our next little sticky out bit of grassland, and just where it kind of comes to the edge and becomes beach and then sea. Some of this to this because I want to keep it darker. I don't want to keep it darker this section more so it's kind of going this way and then that way. So I'm just going to add some of this beautiful green. So it's going to lighten that way. We have plenty of of our light green that we'll do to do that. So this was just like a grassy knoll that was sticking out. Obviously, please feel free to say hello to the chat. This is a live stream. I am indeed live in Scotland painting. And it is, the weather is miserable, which is classic Scottish weather. It never changes, unfortunately. one of my Snellios, so it's quite crumbly, very dry one. I'm just going to lighten the sections that I want. So I want this lighter. And at the moment, a lot of this won't make sense until the dark, I start putting the darks on and then we can start carving out the rocks into our negative space. is the distant hills the light always falls in patches because it's so far away if you were close up you probably wouldn't see the difference um, so this is our following because we were just adding our lighter section in here you see how beautifully textured this material this paper is that I've made it's just gorgeous. And it grips a fair amount of pastel actually. You'd be surprised sometimes. Now, uh, the lighter section, this bit has a weird light bit that just kind of sticks out a wee bit. cuts back round and in, I'm going to come back round to this section. And it's, just want to make it light in the corner where it comes out. 
Yes. Just light on the tip. Where it cuts back in. And then it becomes more rocks. And then the same with this. Because as soon as you put it down on the darker section, it doesn't look that light. But that is contrast for you. And we may well go lighter on this section yet, depending on what I want to do. I also want to add in the complementary colour now. I can't decide whether it's going to be red or whether it's going to be orange. I do like orange. I'm a redhead, so I'm a big fan of orange as a colour. Um, and it is a good complementary colour to blues. Whereas red is a little too close being a primary colour, so actually I think because of the amount of blue in this, I might just use, use the orange. That would make more sense. So this side's lighter than this one. We want the darker guiding you that way. I'm not really adding too much. I don't want to. I want to keep this beautiful texture that we've got from the paper. Remember to drop us a message in the chat and say hi. It's always lovely to see that you're all there and you're not all just bots or falling asleep in the process. some of our sand in before I start putting in some of this and also yeah put some more of our sand in so we're looking for a kind of very pale gold um, that might be too peachy let's have a look and see shall we no, actually, I think that will work. Right, so we're going to go with this. We will use this to help carve out some of the rocks later, so I just need to get a bit more of it down. And then I might get some more of our nice complementary colour in. Let's cut this this way. Lovely little rocky beaches like this, they're just beautiful. So I can cut some of this out because I took this way too far, I didn't want it this far out. So bring some of this back. edge there where it is. It just suddenly stopped. But the same here actually, so I might just do that. And then down and along. Lovely. Now I want to get this complimentary colour in. I want it to be a nice orange. I want it to be a ready orange. That's definitely orange. Um, I do want a gold colour. So do I want to put the orange in first with gold? Let's no, let's put the orange in first because this is going to be a pretty bright colour and it is definitely going to um, suddenly change how this works. So almost straight away you can see the difference that's made. Suddenly you've got this amazing contrasting colour popping against all the other colours that are on here. Okay. I 
to come down to where there's a stony section here. I've kind of not done it yet. I didn't want to work on it too much. But I might just let the pastel do some random stuff. Random, mark, random marks are good because it gives it a more natural, natural look. Now, obviously, I think what's happened is, is at some point I've been using this pastel with my fingers. And so what happens is if you're holding a pastel and you're using it with your fingers, you'll find that the ends, it wears through in the middle and then the ends stick out. So when I do this, you can see I've got end and end and nothing in the middle. So, yeah. Just the way you hold the pastel, which in my case is just weird. So, but it does give me uh, some fun with colours um, and mark making because it means that my pastels are never flat, they're never straight, and I can never actually get um, a proper flat edge from these either. But I kind of like that. So I feel like I need to cut some of this in here as well. I don't want it invading, but I do want a little hint of this here. Maybe just love how the orange makes everything pop. Such a cool colour. Love my oranges. To be fair, I'm a bigger fan of purples, but when I'm doing something like this or I'm working with a lot of greens and blues, orange is such an amazing colour. So I was just gonna add not much, but just little bits here and there. Really, just to help tie this in. And where this is, a bit, a bit more of this here. And no, for those that want to know, no, there is no orange on the beach, okay? Um, that's the advantage and liberty you can have when working um, with abstract landscapes, is you want to be able to to maybe take a little bit of liberty with what you're doing. And in this case, you know, you do, you, you want to be able to have a bit of fun, you know, enjoy it, enjoy what you're doing and don't be held back by what I tend to refer to as local color because yes, that is exactly what you are looking at, but actually, is it when you start really looking into it and I did a, a workshop with um, some teenagers recently who were really surprised when we took a photo of an object and we put it into um, Photoshop and I asked them to start pulling out colors just to make do 50 colors using the eyedropper and pull 50 colors out and then what we did is we then printed those colours out on a piece of paper and I went, right, how many of these colours are actually the colour of the object? And on this case, it was a red apple. Um, and by the time we finished, we had violets and oranges and blues and just different things that are picked out by the chemicals that are in the skin of the object, the apple in this case. And then the type of lighting we're using was picking out different colour tones that realistically, when you look at a red apple, you wouldn't expect to find. It was absolutely amazing. The kids absolutely loved it. Um, we had a lot of a lot of fun, and uh, I think they learned a lot from realizing that it's not until you actually start delving deeper into what you're looking at that you start to see that the colors you're seeing are actually they're made up of lots of different colors. So you're never you're never going to get everything you expect. A red apple is. Not necessarily a red apple, really. All right. That's my very peachy, bright orange. And it is very, very bright orange. Now, I want to put some of the dark, darker blue down. And it goes around the stonework. And that's because the rocks and stuff produce shadows into the water. Now at a distance, that is not going to be the sort of dark that you're expecting. It's not 
dark brown or dark black or dark grey. It's more of a kind of bluey grey tone. And that's because at distance, some light is starting to get through. And that light actually lightens that shadow. So it still looks dark, but not, not dark in the way that you'd expect. And so it is darker out here actually as well. Still light around the edge of this, but not, not as light. And it is such a beautiful, it's actually, um, this is a unison, it's paint, almost like a paint's grey, so it's like a bluey grey. Beautiful colour, I love it. Also where this stonework is that I haven't put in, I need a little bit of a darker blue where it's picking up shadow. I do also want to add some of this into the grass, actually, because I think that's going to help. Help with the stonework first. Now you'll probably be all surprised to see the stonework is not going to be black, it's going to be a brown. Um, I mean, come on, guys, really? I think there's only a few beaches in the world where the stones are actually black, most of those are actually lava stones which I have never been to, but I do want to go to Iceland, so maybe one day I'll be able to pick some up and use it. Um, I'd love to do a, a workshop on stones, which I know sounds really weird, but um, stones are actually pretty incredible to paint, and not just from a detail perspective, but just the colours and hues and tones and lines. There's just so much to them. You're never really sure what you're going to get. I want that to cut up there. Same here with this darker section here. This is an outcropping of loose stones that have come from this hummock of grass that I've stood on. So I kind of like done this weird kind of cascade onto the peach. It just looked a bit weird, but actually it was kind of cool at the same time. And the same with where things are cut straight like that. And a bit of that there. And then where our stonework comes out. Now if you stand on the grass, you see that the grass tends to cut almost to an, almost like it's been cut with a knife, like a perfectly straight edge. And then it drops away with the rocks down and then to the sandy beach. So um, let's make sure that I'm able to cut some of that in when it comes to the grass. beautiful colours. Like a crazy, it's crazy patchwork. Right, I want to find, do you want to do this with a dark blue or a dark brown? It's always the difficulty. Is this a brown for a start? Now for those of you that, yeah it is, for those of you that don't follow my channel, I am sight impaired. So in the UK there is two versions of sight impairment obviously most people just refer to it as blind um but here in the uk we have sight impaired which is like partially sighted and severely sight impaired which is effectively very 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 limited sight there aren't that many people that are actually blind blind but i am sight impaired so i don't have much sight on my left hand side which can sometimes cause problems doing work like this um I tend to bump into things. 
I do have my camera always on my left side and I try to put it high enough that I'm not going to bump into it. But for those that have seen some of my other videos, you know uh, too well that I do regularly bump into my camera. Um, I have considered putting it on the other side, but uh, yeah, just it's not the same. I think it's because I'm right handed. <laughs> That's not looking like how I want it. That's not looking like a weird hammock. So I'm going to just bring this up a wee bit and just use my finger to help. I've got some pastel pencils which I probably will use just to give a little bit more detail to some areas, um, especially for rocks. See as we come in with this dark now, how dark we're going to go. This is going to be the darkest colour. We're not going to go any darker than this. This kind of comes up a wee bit and then up again. And then along, and back down. All these different shapes. Obviously, you're looking at it from a distance, so you can't actually see properly what this is looking like, but. When you, especially when you're taking a photo of hills in the distance, it's like, right, is that actually what I'm looking at, or is this... Is this being obscured by distance and reflection and just generally the curve of the earth, um, especially when it comes to things out to sea. You won't see, you won't see it how you expect to see it, basically. Now, this is where we start getting some fun with these rocks coming in and out, because they're kind of in and out and in and out, <laughs> a bit all over the place. It's a beautiful beach. I do recommend if any of you get a chance to take a holiday to the Scottish islands, definitely visit Harris, definitely check out Boster Beach, um, which is the northern part, it's just so beautiful. And to be fair, any of the Scottish islands have got beautiful beaches, so uh, it's definitely something I recommend. Now this is going to come out here. It doesn't matter, what I'm trying to do is just allow the pastel to kind of skip about a wee bit. It just gives a little bit more naturalness to what we're doing. I mean, this is abstract, but you still kind of want it natural. I do want to... Cut that in a wee bit more. Remember that we're going to keep dragging this in the direction of the sea, which is that way. And that is where we're going. As we come down and around this bit, it cuts dramatically inland. Um, as you can see, kind of where we've got these two scoops where it drops inland. We really want to make that really stand out. So. See where that cuts in there. You'll see how you guys see it from. It looks very different on camera to, um, to in person. So I'm never really sure 100% on whether you can see what I can see or at least as close as. Now 
Ooh, this bit. I know I've got this bit coming out a wee bit more, the grass coming more out than what I've done the colour study, but actually I kind of like it. in and it gets pretty rocky around this area there's a lot of dark a lot of dark rocks in this section that kind of come in and I don't know if this is just where the seeds just been wearing at it a bit more than in other areas maybe but Now it will look a little flat, there are other colours going on, uh, not too many because I don't want to overdo this. I am quite liking how it's going anyway. This is us cutting back round, where we're kind of looping in with the grass section and then we cut back round to here. clean clean cut grass where it kind of stops there and then cuts I want it to kind of cut down and then along so maybe like that and then like that let me just widen that to show that this is, yeah, that's a bit better. It just kind of shows the height difference there. You want to give perception of depth, kind of, um, but not too much. You don't want to go overboard. This isn't supposed to be realistic. It's not supposed to be fully representational. It is supposed to be Boston Beach. So as long as everyone's clear on that one, we're fine. Now I do want to get in this dark section here, which we haven't been able to do yet. This is annoying me, so I'm going to deal with that. So we want this section here. Quite a large dark section, just some like a little rocky outcropping that was sticking out the sea here. It kind of comes down and then runs this way. So we're going to go down. Down again. Long. And long here. And long. And then you've got this kind of line of rocks that just kind of, it's almost like they've just been picked up and put along the shoreline. And that does happen obviously where the tide, if it's high tide, it will pick up uh, loose rocks from the banks and it will, as it's going out, it will pull it along to where it kind of stops and you end up with this really strange line of rocks going all that way. Also, along here. Just rolling the edge of this, it just creates these really finer lines. Where I want them. Just make sure there is a 
So you have occasional kind of like stone, stone here and there. Now, there is also a stony outcropping that I want to deal with, which just it's like a line of stones that um, comes out along this way. I'm just going to let the pastel kind of skip and hop. And then Kind of where it kind of dips, I'm just going to create a stone or a rock like that. And then possibly let's bring it out a little bit more. That's better. I just want to add to make sure that. We're getting the right amount of stonage in. Now, that's where I've got some dark stuff where we've got little stony, rocky bits that have come off of this hummock of land that I'm kind of standing on. So, Make sure we add those in, along with just kind of where it cuts in and out with the stones. Now, can you guys still see? Yeah, you guys can still see. Right. Don't quite like this headland piece here. Don't. I feel like it's in the right line, so I'm going to do that, that's a bit better. I do want to probably lighten up this section. dark up my hands. So I want to lighten up that. I don't want to go too light so this is just little white bits. This is where the foam is hitting the rocks. And it kind of comes in. Back there, where it's kind of got to the end.
Right, that is looking, is looking pretty good actually. Do you want to lighten, lighten certain areas? So I'm going to go one level lighter with my greens. Just this, not that, that is way too, way too yellow. So is that really? I've got like a halfway house between those two. Is this lighter? Yes, just. Just adds a little bit, a little bit more lightness for certain areas. Adding in fine details, nothing much, but just adds. is the direction that we want. We want light, dark, round. And maybe, I think I do need a gold. I need a gold in there somewhere. Something like this. Along with cat hair. It comes free with cat hair. Stand back and go. How is that? I like that. Do you actually like that? I think I'm missing, I'm missing this really.
to sign that off and leave it there, I think. And um, what we'll do is we will remove the study and then I will drown you all out with my uh, heat gun. And we will get all the masking tape off and see what it looks like. So I'll clean my fingers off. Right, first things first, I'll get rid of this. Off you come. That's my colour study. And I'm going to apologise because it's going to get dark on one side because I've only got a two way plug socket. At some point, I will get a, another one. So, this is just my Dovecraft heat gun, and this will help me get the masking tape off without actually um, ripping the paper. So, I'll start with the long sides, I think. even ripping it at all now. Look how easy that's coming off. I love this bit. Bit of ASMR really, isn't it? Because you get this beautiful clean line. As we go up. There we go. There's one side off. Now we're going to do the other one. get this off without burning my fingers. It's always the tricky bit. There we go. It's coming off. And going up. And yes, this does take a little bit of patience, even though you want to get this revealed as soon as possible. It's still really good to kind of just let it go and let it go slowly. that side looking better already right so yes this is just my heat gun which is why it's so noisy so I do apologize but it does make getting the this which is my masking tape off without ripping the paper easiest way to do it it just heats up the glue and it just lets go I'm just going to do the bottom lines you see it's literally just no effort at all it's just coming off but it always looks amazing when you take all the tape off, so. That's the bottom one. One more to go. And there we go. Right, and that's it back in. And as you can see, now that we've got our whiteboard around, it looks a lot, lot better. So I'd like to say thank you everybody that joined me today. It was really good to see you all. Um, hopefully, maybe I'll do another live stream again soon. I don't know. I don't know how this went and how you guys appreciated, but I hope you really enjoyed this abstract landscape and definitely take a look at the other videos on my site. Um, I've got lots and lots of content, so it's really good. And if you want to get into pastels or have any questions, 
please feel free to comment on this video or any of my other videos. I'm always happy to answer questions. So, ta-ta for now. Thank you all for joining me in Scotland and the Highlands in Perthshire. I hope the weather is a hell of a lot better where you are than where we are currently because it's now very wet and damp and cold. And I will see you all soon. So, when I've figured out how to stop this live stream, I will see you all soon. Ta-ta for now.